Interesting. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Speaking of that, like uh, there are some classes before where we would you know, have a limit of the people due to the size of the classroom. Now we don't have those limits. So we mm-hmm. could have 30, 40 people in a class, but know that the more people you have, the more opportunity, or I should say the more questions that people may have. Right. And so therefore you have to make sure either that we keep track of all the questions that people have and then do a follow-up email saying, okay, here are the questions that were covered that were asked in the class mm-hmm. uh, because it could be hard the, to manage the time and also manage up to 30, 40 people in a class. Right, right. Interesting. You'd almost need like a follow-up, not just for the questions, but um, for some of the hands-on that you're describing mm-hmm. where you need to see what they're doing in order to answer their question. Um, you might need more time to do that. It's an interesting I hadn't thought about that. So it works well yeah. in webinar type classes where you're just, oh, yes. you're just yeah, okay, okay, okay. Especially over Zoom webinars where they have the Q&A. And right. if you're recording the session, you're able to also record and keep that Q&A afterwards and then be able to refer back to it and say, put all the questions on a, uh, let's say, a Google Doc. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. do a, a Q&A on that Google Doc and share it with everybody who's in the session. Interesting, interesting. And are you doing uh, are you doing webinars as well as, as just a regular uh, Zoom training? It would depend on the uh, the size of the classes. Um, right. If I have a class that has about a hundred people in it, then I recommend doing it as a webinar mm-hmm. because as a webinar, then it's less um, we, like during a regular class. So I can take a step back here. During a regular class, we have a lot more opportunity for questions throughout and a lot of interruptions throughout the session. Right. But when it comes to webinar, there are so many more opportunities for those distractions uh, uh, distractions or interruptions for a class. So instead of giving people the opportunity to unmute themselves, they can then post any questions inside the chat, knowing that there's always a chance we may not be able to answer that question in the chat, right. but it will be answered eventually. Right, 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 right. It's probably just easier to manage. It sounds like, you know, if you've got that number of people, it's just an easier thing to manage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and because they changed on Zoom, they changed. Um, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't unmute people. It used to be that you could, uh, you could, you could control the muting and unmuting. <laughs> but that was, a, I, I missed that. <laughs> yes, now we just have to. We can only ask them to unmute themselves. That's right. That's right. Uh, but as they host, though, at least you can mute them, though. So if somebody yes. does come into the session, you know, that's one of the small things we had issues with, or not issues with, but new instructors who are new to Zoom. Um, they would sometimes forget to mute somebody or Uh, they would accidentally unmute themselves. And then we'd hear those fun background noises that we get um, unintentionally. We all know a lot more about each other, don't we, in their personal (laughs) personal lives, our pets, our kids. Yes.